Hello everybody, welcome to Monterey. I'm at the Quail and we're going to show some of my top picks. Roughly 10 cards that I found here that I really like. Let's get into it. Just hanging out at the Tribute to World Rally Cars class. And there are some spectacular cars here. Love the Martini, Livery, Lancia Delta these guys are cleaning. And in the back here is Ken Block's RS200. Definitely a highlight for me here at the Quail. Such a neat car for Ken to aspire to, modify and make his own and attach it as part as a successful Hoonigan brand. Yeah, one of my top picks for here at the Quail. Next to Lancia, these are called the 037. Looks so aggressive with all the spotlights and the martini livery, the big wing on the back. Just such a purpose built Group B rally car. And next, I want to share with everybody this absolutely wild Ferrari 412 that at some point was converted to a station wagon shooting brake. And it is a very interesting transformation. You can see the roof line was respected here, how it drops back on a nice gentle curve. I didn't know this car even existed until this morning. It looks like it's been in Switzerland. I see the CH sticker on the back bumper. Quasset, name of the car. Very interesting, one of here at the Quail. My first voiceover here at the Quail due to music is going to be in the modern supercars or what people are calling a neoclassic era. And these are the cars that are appreciating the most in the market at auction. Cars like this broke many records and it really is the new wave of car collecting. And here's a rare one, an MT900S supercar manufacturer out of Florida that produced a number of cars. A white on white Countach. We got Ford GT, XJ220, Carrera GT. So many great, wonderful shapes that bring me back 20 or 30 years ago. I'm just going to snake through here to my pick here and that's this one of six mercedes clk gtr roadster so mercedes made 25 of these to homologate the clk gtr in the bpr global endurance series and then hwa which is kind of a wing of amg and partnered with mercedes made six of these road going cars in open top form. It is truly a remarkable thing. I have a look in here. You can see, I think we can read that. Yes, limited edition, number three of six in the world. It's such a radical departure from a race car. And yeah, with the wing on the back, what a wonderful piece. Okay, this, the Zinger press conference is happening in the background there. So I apologize for the noise, but that lets me show you my next top pick here at the Quail, and that's this Delahaye with a custom body by Frenet. It's a wonderful marriage of French curves, art deco design, exquisite chrome work, and brilliant paint. I'm in love with this. I saw it last owned by Sam Mann at Pebble Beach. And I am in love, especially with the accent lines, the triple accent lines. You can see for the, the on the skirts there, that extends to the inside of the door cards. Look at this interior, the chrome work here around the bezels. It is such a wonderful jewel. And just the way everything works, even the soft top rail around here, it is 
really my Seven. pick for best in show today. Wow. Now let's have a look at the most spectacular display at the Quail, and it's these five pre-war cars that were on display courtesy of the Peterson Museum in LA. Starting off with this 1939 Bugatti with this fantastic body by Van Voren, which is actually a copy of a Fagoni A. Falashi Delahaye we'll see at the end of this row. Now this car was pretty special because it was gifted to the Shah of Iran by the French government as a wedding gift but you have a look at the lines on the rear. What a dramatic roadster. And it's really spectacular in detail as well. You can see the way the handles are integrated to the chrome accents, the interior is very well done, and the front windscreen actually winds up and down in the cowl. Fantastic car. And next to it is a car that was gifted to the Peterson by the Muller Museum. It's this Chaperon Coupe Grand Lux. It was a rebodied pre-war V12 Delahaye, and it is so spectacular. It's one of two in the world, and there we can see Henry Chaperon. It was one of the very last great cars he ever did. Now we can see there were tear-offs here at the show, so you could rip off a poster, which was a nice touch by the Peterson Museum. And then we're moving on to another ex mullen Museum car. This is one of 14 Talbot Lago teardrop goat to o designs and this one was purchased new by bentley boy chairman wolf bernardo one of 14 cars in the world really showing off the exuberance of french design just look at the chrome accents and the way they nestled into the bodywork so well done super hard to restore now, I'm a big fan of these Delahaye 135s. Not a straight line on that car anywhere. And as I come around here into the sun, really shows the wonderful color of this Delahaye. Yeah, wow, that is rolling sculpture. It is truly a work of art. Next is a longtime Peterson Museum car. This 1952 Ferrari 212 that was first sold to Henry Ford. That's why it has white walls and some other custom appointments. Now this car is exceedingly original, only 13,000 miles from new, never been restored. So we can have a look in here at a lot of the original fits and finishes. I think that's the original white upholstery in there. And it has this custom windscreen as well. The glass is cut rather uniquely. And that was the very last Touring Barquetta. And then we're gonna end up on the most spectacular car that was recently gifted to the Peterson from the Closed Mullen Museum. And that's the 1939 New York World's Fair Delahaye. This is a spectacular aerodynamic cabriolet from Fagonier Falashi. And it's built on top of a custom 135 chassis and a V12 engine. And again, it has all the same details we saw in that Bugatti, which the Bugatti copied, like the door handle, the windscreen, which goes into the cowl. I like this color scheme a lot more, the red on cream. And at the back, it's just so wonderful and flowing. And compared to the Bugatti, it's a little bigger. It has a little bit more better specifications. So yeah, what an incredible car the Peterson Museum recently acquired. Holy. Wow, look at the crowd for the Lamborghini unveil. Goes into the new products. So we started an offensive last year with the Lamborghini Revuelto, which is a global success story. And this year uh, in Beijing in April, we launched, we presented the Urus SA. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here we are presenting the successor of the Lamborghini Huracan, the all new Lamborghini Temerario. And I'm, I'm, ask uh, Mitya Borkat and Ruben Moore to help me to unveil the car. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Thank you. Okay, time to do a parking lot tour of the quail starting with the scepter in the weirdest color like a coral
All right, I've made it to the great Ferrari lawn and there's three picks here in my sights. So I'm gonna start off with this 1952 340 Mexico owned by Brian Ross. And it is, I believe, the most original of the cars. If we're getting close here, you can see the patina. These of course were cars that were made for the Carrera Panamericana race. And they used the big Lampretti V12 engine. It's such an interesting Vignale body style too. Vignale kind of adopted their show car lines on the Ferrari competition car. And it's such a wonderful synthesis of uh, Ferrari engineering and Vignale design. And just behind it here is a very special car that hasn't been seen in an awful long time. It comes from the Robert and Ann Lee collection. It's a NART version of the 365 GTB and it has a custom body on it. It looks totally brand new and I believe it's really completely original. What do they say here? It's last of the five GTB4 Daytona Nart Spiders rebody by Michelotti. That's it. It's a Michelotti rebody. You can see the badge here from Turin, Italy. And the interior here with the beading. What a wonderful car to see here at the Quail. I'm going to finish up with this gorgeous Vignale Ferrari 375, I believe. Oh no, the music. Yeah, 375 millip. It's a 1953 Ferrari 250 Europa Vignale. And it has such unusual, strange and radical lines on it. The headlight treatment is unique on this car. It's definitely a one of. I really do like the fastback design here, that green tinted um, glass and this double accent line that Vignale like to do on Ferraris. You can see it runs the whole belt line of the car and all the way around. Yeah, great Ferraris here at the Quail. Yes, it's MG100 here at the Quail. And I wanna show you two cars that I've picked out that I really do love. One is this 1925 Morris MG Bullnose. It's something that we just don't see here in North America. One of these really, really early MGs. And I really like this one because it has this kind of boat tail saloon design. It's very unique. I've never seen it before. Yeah, wow, terrific. And just moving around here, you can see some of the other great MGs on display. But what I want to do is finish up on this MG PAPB Airline Coupe. This is such a striking, beautiful, streamlined, almost French design on an MG body. I think this is owned by Wayne Carini. Yeah, one of the best MGs in the world. I love the little radiator mascot here. And maybe we could have a look inside here. The tiny little coupe dashboard. And it has this very interesting sliding roof design with the three portholes that are distinct to the airline coupes, of which there are only a handful in the world. I think there's only about 10 of these. Hey, Scott. Another pick is this bright yellow Alfa Romeo with a custom body by Gia from the Robert and Ann Lee collection. This car has not been seen in an awful long time and it has unique features that aren't on any other car like the split bumpers and the way that the taillight treatment is kind of extended all the way to the front of the car. It's not in the best lighting right now, 
but definitely one of my picks for the quail. It's a 1955, 1900 CSS, and it's designed by Giovanni Savanuzzi, one of the last special bodied alphas with transitional, of the transitional 1900 series. Nice detail there too. Wow, look at that, thank you. It's a blue interior on yellow, isn't that interesting? Wow, and the steering wheel. Magnificent. Awesome, thank you. You bet. The back has luggage straps. Oh, luggage there. straps, yes. okay. Look at that. Okay, so luggage could fit in there. Is it too much trouble to see the engine? What are you making, a YouTube video? Yeah, just a tour of my favorite cars here. What's your year? name? Richard Michael Owen. Yes, I've seen your video. Awesome, hey, thank you. I was watching him the other day. Oh, perfect. I'm trying to fight the music. The music's so loud yeah, here. So no, every time too, they turn it down, I'm like, oh, time to record. Wow, loud. look at that. Wow. Amazing. That is so wonderful. Look at the, the heat cover there for the exhaust so I, and the fits and the finishes. It is so spectacular. He makes wow. Interesting YouTube video. Thank you. You're welcome. Another pick here at the Quail is this 1937 MGSA Reinhold and Christy Cabriolet Swiss coachwork on an MG chassis. Such an imposing and dramatic MG with these flowing lines. It's definitely world class and I am so happy to see it today. Wow, look at the length of that. Holy moly, is this the most elegant MG in the world? It just might be. Look at that with the door treatment and the wonderful dashboard. Mamma mia. Wow, one of the top MGs I've ever seen. You know, we saw this, the airliner over there and now this cabriolet here is just blowing me away. Terrific. Wow, the rear is so dramatic and flowing. Swiss plates. Incredible. One more pick here is a Sierra with a custom Vignale body. It is totally unique and bespoke like so many of my picks here at the Quail. See the rear end design with the French dim lights, the bumper which is so beautifully sculpted around the bodywork. Amazing. It really it looks like the treatment that Vignale typically applied to the Ferraris. But here it is on a 1953 Sienna 208S. Huge big grill, very typical of maybe an Aston Martin. A spectacular Vignale design. All right, everybody. That does it for my tour of the Quail. Just finding some cool cars while the press conferences were going on. While the music was cut, trying my best. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye. Tallahay was constructed in 1937 as an open wheel race car to challenge the mighty 500 Mercedes. Ladies and gentlemen, 1937 Tallahay 1000.